The iPhone 15 Pro Max has been out for about three months, and this past weekend, I finally realized that it was a mistake to buy myself a pro camera, namely the $3,000 Sony a7R4A, because we just got back from our trip to New York, where we spent hours walking around different districts, and even up in the tallest building in the nation, taking photos with both the iPhone and this pro camera for our massive blind comparison, and I've learned that the iPhone 15 Pro Max is the first iPhone that's a better camera for five different reasons. The first and main reason is that it actually won in our blind camera comparison video, which by the way, I'll put in the end screen at the end of this video so you can check it out. I literally carried the pro camera around New York City for three days taking a variety of photos in the daylight, sunset lighting, indoor lighting, nighttime, and with bright bokeh lights in the background just to make sure we covered all bases. And even though the sensors on the iPhone are significantly smaller than the ones on the Pro camera, which has a full frame sensor, Max and Ben both chose around five to six more iPhone photos than Pro camera photos out of a total of 35. And the crazy thing is that I used the most basic HEIF photo mode, which barely uses any storage compared to edited raw photos on the pro camera, which have to save a ton of data in order to give you the most flexibility during editing. For example, with this set of photos of the Cybertruck that we got to check out in the famous meatpacking district, the iPhone's photo was 1.7 megapixels compared to 61.8 on the A7R 4 a massive 36 times larger. And guess what? The iPhone still won because of the insanely good photo stacking AI processing with Smart HDR5. But now getting into the second reason why the iPhone is a better camera, it's the price. The 15 Pro Max is only $1,200 and it does a whole lot more than just take photos. It's basically your connection to the world, your family, your friends, and to many apps, games, tech devices, and so much more. Now my Sony a7R 4 retails at $3,000 brand new, but that's just the camera body alone not including the lens. So because of that, I bought myself a budget lens, Sony's 50 millimeter F1.8 portrait lens, which is only 200 bucks on Amazon. But unfortunately, that simply doesn't compare to the iPhone, which is able to take photos at a variety of different zoom lengths, ranging from the ultra wide 12 millimeter camera, the main 1X camera, which is 24 millimeters, the excellent new 2X zoom mode, which is 48 millimeters, and and the brand new 120 millimeter 5X camera, not even talking about the selfie camera as well. So because of that, I had to borrow this lens from her office, which is the Sony 24 to 70 millimeter GM lens, which costs $2,300 by itself, being by far the best fit that we have in order to match the camera varieties of the iPhone, but that still wasn't enough because the iPhone has the ultra wide, which I didn't want to get another lens to lug around New York for the pro camera. And the iPhone also has the 5X 120 millimeter camera. So I basically had to take photos at 70 millimeters with the pro camera and crop in to achieve the same level of zoom. And to think that you get a total of four very high quality camera zoom ranges on the back of the iPhone 15 Pro Max for $1,200 compared to basically $5,300 with the pro camera setup that still lacks two of those cameras is just insane. Now, before we get into number three, I wanna show you guys the new classic case aluminum from our sponsor Bandwork, the most premium case I've ever seen because it's made out of a precisely milled aluminum frame that you quickly assemble for a perfect fit to protect your iPhone while the back is covered in durable quality leather made in Germany with a soft lining and MagSafe support on the inside. And you can order one today by using the link in the description with code MAXTECH23 for a free one ounce leather ball. Now getting into reason number three, we have portability. 
In order to bring the pro camera on our trip to New York City, we had to sacrifice quite a lot of luggage space to fit the camera, as well as weight because checked in bags have a limit of 50 pounds, and this setup is three pounds. Because of that, it was an absolute pain to carry around the city, even with the strap, which I had to keep on my neck, which made me feel like a hunchback with all of that constant weight. And honestly, after the first few hours, my neck started hurting, so I decided to leave it at the hotel, and I ended up missing out on a bunch of photo comparison opportunities at Times Square. So for the remainder of the trip, I kept swapping with my wife, who was able to fit the strap around her shoulder, to give me a break since we were basically walking around different parts of the city all day for three days straight. Overall, it was a huge pain and I've decided that I will never bring a pro camera to New York again unless we have to make another one of these videos. Now the iPhone on the other hand is tiny in comparison, it literally just fits in your pocket. No issues with luggage space or weight, no issues with neck strain or the annoyance of having to carry it around everywhere and swap it with my wife all the time so I don't break my neck. Now for reason number four, I had to spend hours editing all of the raw photos that I took on this pro camera to get them prepped for the camera comparison before they were actually looking good and comparable to the iPhone. That meant that I had to snap the photos, grab the SD card, plug it into the Mac, then edit and export them to JPEG. And if I wanted to share them on social media, I would then have to airdrop them back to my iPhone. This reason alone is why so many professional photographers who have expensive cameras literally just use their iPhones. You can snap a photo and bam, you can share it on Instagram instantly, requiring no additional editing or exporting to get a great looking photo. And if you want to, you can quickly add a filter or make a quick adjustment and that's it. So for that reason, the iPhone is so much better. And finally, for reason number five, the iPhone simply has much better technology in multiple different categories. First of all, the area where the iPhone performed the best was at night, where Apple's night mode processing and photo stacking allowed it to outperform the pro camera basically every time, because with the pro camera, I had to use noise reduction, which softened the details, while the iPhone was sharper at night every single time. The iPhone can also do night mode portraits like this one, while blowing out less of the bright background and having having proper exposure on my wife for a much better photo. On top of that, the iPhone has insanely good built-in stabilization, including the new action mode, which allowed me to run around the Cybertruck for this super smooth footage, which literally would not be possible on the pro camera unless you buy an expensive gimbal, which are also huge and would make it even harder to carry around and fit into your luggage. Plus, the iPhone's new Smart HDR5 is insanely good so much better than what you can get on a pro camera. So throughout the comparison, there were so many pro camera photos that had the details in the sky completely blown out because the dynamic range just doesn't match up compared to the iPhone, which can instantly stack multiple exposures at once within a split second to retain shadow and sky details. And finally, the iPhone has the 120 millimeter 5X camera, which works incredibly well even at night because of its game-changing 3D stabilization, giving you an entirely new perspective that looks so good. So for all of those reasons, the iPhone 15 Pro Max is the first iPhone ever that is finally better than a pro camera. And my final conclusion is that it's no longer worth it to buy any pro camera at all, unless you're a professional photographer or videographer and you're making money with it. So hopefully you enjoyed this camera review. And if you did, you can subscribe above and check out that full 15 Pro Max versus pro camera video right over there. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.